What is the worst feedback you can possibly get? If you're a speaker, an author, a creative, any kind of creator, like content creator, course creator, business owner, and you are in front of a potential prospect or someone that you just want to reach, what is the worst possible feedback that you can get? See, most people that I work with come to me afraid of the no, afraid of getting a no from the prospect. But as we will talk about today in this conversation, no is not the worst response or the worst feedback. In fact, no becomes a breeze. And it's something that you stop being afraid of after you understand what is the worst feedback that you can possibly get and how to avoid it and work around it. Are you ready to know what it is? Then stick around for this conversation of Sincerely Speaking. Hi, I'm Marcy Amar, a leadership communication coach, and I'm on a mission to help speakers, authors, and creators of all kinds simplify their message so they can elevate their leadership and increase their impact. Are you ready to have a greater impact? Are you ready to be known as the go-to person in your industry? Are you ready to step out of the shadows and shine in the spotlight? Then stick around for this conversation of Sincerely Speaking, and then go check out some of the resources at marciamara.com. Talk soon. Now, as I said in the beginning, a lot of people are afraid of the no, and I was one of them. I was terrified of hearing no, so I would do everything in my power to avoid hearing that no. So I would procrastinate, I would dance around the issue, I would not pitch, I would not try to make the sale because I was so afraid of hearing no at the other end. And then I learned two things. The first one, I'm just going to give it to you as a bonus and as a gift. Somebody once told me it's already a no. If you don't ask, it's already a no. If you don't take the step, it's already a no. So why are you afraid of an audible no when you've already given yourself a, a no in another way, right? So that's the first thing. But then the other thing I learned is that no is not the worst feedback or response that you can get. In fact, no is an invitation to explore further, whether it it really is that the relationship is not a good fit at the time or a good fit at all, or whether it is that you get to explore other aspects of that relationship or that interaction, right? So no is an invitation to growth and to further exploration. But the worst feedback that you can get is I'm confused. I'm confused. And that I'm confused can come in several different ways. It can come in the form of I'll think about it, or it can come in the form of I need to talk to my spouse, or it can come in the form of I'll get back to you, right? All of those are other masks or other ways of saying I'm confused. There's something in here that is not clear. There's something in the interaction and the messaging and the things that you presented that is making me feel insecure, in the decision that I get to make. And so I will disguise it as anything and everything. And I will leave the conversation in this void, like in this little black hole almost, right? Where you don't know what's what and what's happening because the conversation ended in confusion instead of clarity, or the conversation led to more questions than answers. And so you get to the space where the prospect is confused. You don't know exactly how to get out of that space. And anytime you open your mouth, you (laughs) seem to make it worse. And so it's this feeling of, oof, I miscommunicated. I did something that I shouldn't have done, or I said something in a way that didn't really work. And so this person is going to go out there and keep seeking for the answers that you have, but that you didn't make clear you could provide. And they might end up working with someone less qualified with not as great intentions or not as good as as you at what you do, because in this initial interaction or in this conversation that could have led to the sale, there was something in there that became confusing. See, here's part of what's happening in our environment today. Because of the way the world has been working, we have come to look at fancy wording or people who have this elevated way of speaking as almost like politicians who are trying to create a smoke screen with their words and hide behind those words so that they don't have to be as upfront, direct, or transparent as you would like them to be. So we have come to understand people who speak in a certain way as hiding something. And we have also most of us, and you might um, resonate with this once, and, uh, once I say it, and you might be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. But we have come to think think of simple and direct language as the same as being transparent. And then 
convoluted, confusing language with big fancy words that we don't understand, we have come to look at as somebody who's trying to hide behind those big words, get us all confused, kind of like trick us into or manipulate us into agreeing to do whatever it is that they want us to do. But using those words that are not easy to understand and using that confusion to gaslight and manipulate us into doing something, right? So the more confusing the conversation becomes, the more likely the other person is to say, I don't know, I need to think about it. I need to talk to my spouse. They might even say no in more of a stern, like more of a firm way, because they really feel like you're trying to take advantage of them because of the kinds of words that you're using. So the more we can simplify our message in business, the more your message becomes direct, simple, easy to understand, the more you're going to then elevate your leadership in the situation, the more the person is going to be willing to follow your influence, and the more you're going to be able to create an impact in that person's life because they are no longer worried about, wait, am I understanding this right? Are they trying to trick me with these words? Are they just sounding fancy so that I stop paying attention to the details? Are they trying to say a lot without saying anything like politicians do, right? And am I going to end up regretting this decision? So the essence of our conversation today is the three core things that we get to look at so that our conversation and our message, especially uh, when conducting business, is simple, direct, feels trustworthy because it is, and leads to the best possible outcome for everybody involved. So let's get right into it. So there are three things that if we pay attention to them are going to help us simplify our message, are going to help us be more direct and open in our communication, and are going to help us, as a result, lead the conversation in a way that the all the people involved are going to feel like they are clear on what you're communicating, that everything is simple and doable, and like they can follow you because they trust you. Make sense? And when you get to that space where you have simplified your message to the point where you can elevate your leadership and your influence and you can create a greater impact, then you can really be of service to those people that you're called to serve, to those people that you know you get to make a difference in their life because you have gone through something similar or because you have a solution that has been tested or simply because you know you are meant to serve in that area, right? So the first thing is you need to be clear on who your audience is. And I know we talk about this all the time, but I'm not talking about niching necessarily. I'm talking about who is it that you're talking to directly. And I am going to tell you something that is going to probably shift a lot of the ways in which you have seen even the idea of niching down, right? So most of us think of an audience as this mass of people. So we're trying to reach this group of people that we know we can serve. And we're trying to reach this particular segment, this particular part of the population, because we know we can help them. And for some of us, what we do, we even think, oh, wait, this can help anybody and everybody. So we start thinking about the whole world as somebody that you might be talking to. But when I'm talking about be clear on your audience, I'm talking about think about one person, one specific person that you are communicating with at this particular moment with this particular message about this particular thing, right? And we're going to talk more about your core message in a second, but one person, one person. I work with public speakers a lot. I work with people who want to stand in front of a group of people and deliver a presentation or a keynote or a workshop or something along those lines. And a lot of them come to me with this fear of talking in front of a large group. And the very first thing I tell them is you're not talking to a group. You're talking to a person. If you try to talk to a group, if you try to talk to a whole audience, that is going to make your job increasingly harder. You're going to get more anxious and you're not going to really reach anybody because you're talking to something that is not human. A mass is not human. A crowd is not human. It's just a blob. But if you understand that even in talking to a number of people, you're talking one-on-one, -on -one, there just happens to be a lot of one-on-ones at the same time, then that changes the way you perceive it, the way you approach it, and the way you lead that conversation, right? So even if you are in a scenario of public speaking and you have a thousand people in the room, 
don't think about talking to the thousand people. Think about talking one-on-one -on -one to the person. So when I am standing in front of a large group, if I think about the whole group and I try to see everybody and I try to make sure that I'm catering to everybody, that becomes really heavy. It becomes hard to do and it becomes, it causes anxiety, right? And it causes fear and it causes all these not so productive and not so helpful emotions inside of me. But when you are able to personify it, when you are able to make it personal and direct, when you're able to think, no, 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 wait, I'm talking to this person first and I'm looking them in the eye and I'm having a conversation just with them and I'm enjoying the interaction with them and I'm looking to see what feedback I get from their body language, from their eyes, from their expressions, and I'm satisfied that I have reached them, then I can move to the next person. And I can keep doing that. And even if you don't get to everybody in the room, it doesn't matter. Because believe it or not, and this is a little counterintuitive, but believe it or not, when you are having one-on-one -on -one conversations, even when it's a large group of people, that makes everybody else feel like you're really personalizing the message, like you're reaching them one-on-one. -on -one. And so that makes it so that they get engaged and involved in the conversation a lot more. And that makes your message easier to understand because you're not no longer thinking about okay how can I make that so that everybody in the room understands me I'm just trying to make sure that I reach one person at a time one person at a time and I'm looking at that audience member that one person as the most important connection at the moment and then I move to the next one and I try to shift it around and when you can do that when you can go one on one on one and just be clear on what you're trying to reach what you're trying to um, help them understand what you're trying to communicate with them and when you're looking them in the eye and seeing the understanding and the engagement and the comprehension and when you can cater it to that one person then everything shifts like even talking to the screen I'm not imagining however many people are going to watch this, I'm imagining that I'm talking to you and you alone and you and I are having a private conversation and other people are welcome to listen in, but it's the conversation between you and me. So when you can be clear on the fact that your audience is one person and you can focus on that one person and you can get to try to know them if at all possible at a more intimate, deeper level, then that changes the interaction, that changes the communication and that changes your approach to it and allows you to be simple, direct, and clear in what you're trying to say. So that's the first one. The second one is your core message. So one of the things that I have noticed, especially in things like webinars and in things like keynote speeches, is that very often we try to bite off more than we can chew as speakers. So when you stand in front of an audience, whether it is an audience of one or an audience of a thousand, and you're having those one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, if you are trying to weave too many things together, if you're trying to accomplish too many things, then the message gets confusing. Then the message is hard to present in a way that is easy to follow. And then people start getting lost. So the more you can narrow down what your end message is, the more you can refine it so that you are communicating one main thing to your audience, one main thing for the person you're talking to to remember, one main thing for the person you're talking to to understand, then you can make everything come together in a way that makes sense. You can make everything flow. You can make your message direct and simple. You can then decide what makes sense to add and what doesn't. But the key thing here is to reverse engineer, to work from the end towards the beginning and ask yourself at the beginning, what is the one idea? What is the one transformation? What is the one problem that I want my audience to be able to understand, remember, or tackle by the time we're done in our time together, by the time we're finished with this conversation. And if you focus on just that one thing, that one idea, that one problem, that one transformation, that one message, then you can work backwards and think about, okay, if what I want is my audience to be able to simply communicate their message, what things do I need to tell them so that they can do that at the end? And then think of 
two or three core things, two or three main things that will lead them from where they are right now to where you know they can be at the end of whatever the length of your conversation is and focus on that. Don't try to add too much. Don't try to have 20 things that you're trying to present. Don't try to weave two ideas together. It's one thing, one message, one core thing that you want your audience to remember. And that thing is what you're going to build upon and that you're going to buckle down and cement, right? As you present the rest of your ideas. And the third thing is do a comprehension check. Do a comprehension check. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. Statistics show that the average adult, especially in the United States, I haven't checked these stats worldwide, but specifically in the United States, the average adult has a reading comprehension level of eighth grade. And I'm not saying this to make anybody feel badly. I'm just saying most of us stay at a vocabulary level of about eighth grade. In terms of making your message simple, most experts agree that if we talk Above a third grade level, we're going to lose about 60% of the people we talk to, right? We're going to confuse or just make it hard to follow for most people if we go above a third grade level when we're talking. So the idea here is to look at the information you're presenting and ask yourself, do I have any industry jargon in there, right? So am I using words that are only going to be understood by people who work in the same field that I work in and who has to have the same or similar experience that I have? See how you can change those to simpler words, right? Do I have words that are too elevated or too lofty, too hard to understand? How can I bring them down to a level that is understandable to most people? See, the, the test here is... And I was about to say the litmus test, but that, come on. <laughs> the test here is if I gave the same information using the same language to a third grader, would they understand it or would they end up confused? And that doesn't mean that you're going to treat your audience like they're not intelligent. That doesn't mean that you're going to dumb things down. It just means you're going to look at your language and you're going to think, okay, am I making this too industry specific? Am I making this more confusing than it needs to be? And am I using words that I could easily simplify, that I could use more everyday language around so that I know at the end that my audience, the person that I'm talking to, and me, we're on the same page and we're understanding each other. And so when we can look at our information and do a comprehension check, right, maybe even invite other people that you trust who are similar to the audience, to the person that you want to reach in your presentation and test it with them and go through it and ask them, okay, if I say this, is this clear? If I say that, is that clear? And I make sure that you're asking this question to people who are not in your industry and who don't know exactly the same thing that you know, right? Because if you ask your colleague who has been working in your same industry for 20 years, then that's not a fair test. But if you ask your high school kid, or you ask your spouse who's in a different industry, or you ask your mom who has no clue what you do, and you ask them, okay, if I say this, does this make sense to you? Then that can help you in the comprehension check piece. But even if you don't have anybody that you can sit down, that you can ask, that might be representative of the person you're trying to talk to, then just look through the information that you're presenting and ask yourself those questions. Do I have any words that are specific to my industry that only people in my industry would understand? Am I using words that are too elevated, right? That are too fancy, too sophisticated, but that I could simply make easier to understand by shifting them, by changing them to something that is more of the everyday? And am I putting my information in a way that makes sense that leads to this core message that I already have? And when you can check that, then you know that you have uh, a communication in front of you that is simplified enough to reach your audience, your intended audience. And this is particularly important in business because there's this saying that a confused mind always says no. And that is the greatest truth that you can learn in business. So when you can look at your information, the words that you're using, the way that you're saying things, and you can remove anything that might confuse, then you are making the line from 
presenting your information from pitching to purchase, you're making it shorter and you're making it more straighter and easier to follow. And so you can lead that conversation from this is what I offer to the yes in a lot more simplified, streamlined way when you can remove all these words that can become confusing. And we tend to think, especially in business, that if we can show how much we know by using these fancy words, by using terms that show that we understand the industry, or by using this fancy language that makes us look like somebody that is knowledgeable and that is wise, that we are going to get farther. But nothing is <laughs> more of a, a misconception than that. If we can simplify it, make it easy for them to see, and make it so that they can see themselves doing what we have done, then we are simplifying the process and we're making it easier for people to follow us, to purchase from us, to be uh, prospects for life and to even refer us to other people, right? And so there's a little bonus that I wanna give you in all of this. Sometimes when we're trying to simplify our message, we think, okay, this is where I want to end up. Um, this is where I wanna take my prospect, right? This is the end result that I'm looking to create. This is the main message that I'm delivering. And I'm even able to see the words that I need to take out, but then I'm left with this very simple message that doesn't seem to engage or pull at uh, the person's strings in the right way. And I don't mean that in a manipulative way, but to tug, tug at the emotions, right? Because we know that most people conduct business at an emotional level first, and then the intellect kicks in. So when you are simplifying your message, that doesn't mean that you get to make it dull or that it is lackluster or that it doesn't have anything that emotionally connects with the person that you're trying to talk to. But the way that we are going to do this moving forward is we're going to start thinking about metaphors, stories, or ways to create images that will allow the other person to get involved in and to get drawn into and to get pulled into the conversation without us having to use fancy words and without confusing. And in fact, especially when we have several people that we're talking to at the same time and we're having those individual conversations, but with a group listening, the more we can incorporate images and illustrations and metaphors and stories, the easier it's going to be for those listening in to be drawn into what we're saying and to benefit from that conversation that we're having with another person at the time as they're listening in. So how do we do this? Imagine, if you will, that you are talking to a two-year-old and you're having this conversation with a two-year-old and you're trying to make that two-year-old understand how important it is to help out in the house, how important it is to pick up after themselves and to leave the space beautiful, how important it is to understand that other people share the space and to be considerate to those people. Even saying things like this to a two-year-old might be too much. But if you can think of a story like... I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good story for this, but if you're trying, if you can think of a story of a little girl who lived in a forest and the forest creatures were coming in and the bunny was leaving um, the acorn there and then the squirrel came and left something else and then the fox came and then pretty soon the little girl, when she was starting to try to walk, she would step on the acorn and it would hurt her foot and then she would step on the other thing and it would hurt her knee or she would try to sit and it would hurt her bum because there were things everywhere. But then the little forest animals remembered that they needed to pick up after themselves so the little girl wouldn't get hurt. You just gave that little girl the same story, but you made it in a way that allowed her to connect, right? So in that same way, and I made that very childish, but you get the message. Anytime you're trying to communicate something that you can attach to the emotions in some way by using metaphors or stories or some sort of illustration. If you're giving a presentation and you have the ability to have an image that illustrates the point, anytime you can bring it to the part of the Im imagination that sees the picture, then you're going to connect that message in a simpler, more direct, even easier way. And you're going to get your audience to buy into what you're trying to present. Right. So just to recap, simplifying your message in business 
is essential because a confused mind will always say no. And the worst feedback that you can get from your prospect is not no, it's some form of I'm confused. And the way you reduce getting that feedback, the way you eliminate so many of the I'll think about it and the I have to talk to my spouse and all these other I'm confused objections is by making your, se- your message as simple, as direct as you can. And you start by really understanding who it is that you're talking to. Clarify your audience. And that means make it as personal and as individual and you, as you can, even when you're speaking to a group. The second thing is make sure that you have one core message that you're trying to deliver, one core thing that you want your audience to remember at the end and make everything else in your conversation, in everything that you're presenting, make sense to getting to that one destination, to getting to that one thing, that one message, that idea. And then Make sure that you do a comprehension check. Look at the language you're using. Look at the way in which you're presenting the information and make sure that everything that you're doing is clear, direct, to the point. Remove all the industry jargon, all the words that are just part of your industry. Remove anything in there that might confuse the person listening. And the check, if a third grader can understand it, then you're in really good shape, right? And then as a little bonus, if you're trying to connect at a deeper level, if you're trying to make that emotional connection that makes it easier for whoever you're talking to to trust you and to buy what you're offering and to know that they get to do business with you and feel good about it, then start incorporating illustrations, things that allow the other person to envision, to see in their mind's eye what you're trying to communicate and do that through metaphors, stories, and images. So the question today is, how can you make your message simpler and more direct? How can you make your message simpler and more direct? Connect with me on the comments. Let me know what you're working on, what you're thinking about. If you have a hard time with something, share it with me and I'll do my best to get back with you and give you some feedback and some ideas on how you can simplify that message so that you can connect better with your audience. And find me on social media. Let's connect. Make sure to subscribe and we will chat soon.